Today we're going to continue on the key switch test the numpad. This is part 2, so if you haven't seen part 1, give that a watch first before watching this. But essentially I'm turning this cheap Tesoro to zone a numpad into a wooden key switch tester with various types of key switches. I also spray painted the sides of the keycaps to match the colour of the key switches beneath it. I would have preferred some transparent keycaps so you can just see straight through it, but I couldn't get any. But today is all about the wooden case. I'm way way far from a woodworker or anything, but I wanted to hand make something before I start showing some cool stuff on my CNC. So for the wood, I needed some hardwood, or it'll be dented too easily. Without going to some sort of specialty lumber place, it's not the easiest to find. There's always a ton of like, pine, MDF, plywood and all that, and they're not really suitable for what I want. So I'm using some Tasmanian oak that I found at my local hardware store. And this is 19mm thick, which is a pretty good thickness for making keyboards in general. It's also 135mm wide, which is just enough maybe to fit a 10 keyless keyboard, but it can easily fit a 60% keyboard and all that. This is also the shortest piece I could find, so this can actually make a couple of keyboards, but that just depends on how good the wood fares after this. The end of the wood isn't straight, so I'm just going to cut that off, and then I'll roughly mark out the other side, leaving enough room for mistakes. After a bit of sanding, I drew out the proper dimensions and cut it on the bandsaw, and then sanded it again. I'm basically going to be mimicking the original top shell, so there's going to be the large hole for the key switches and the keycaps to go through, and then I need to have a little lip for it to sit in. The shaded areas, except for that rectangle at the top, won't be touched. The inner section will be totally cut out. And the other bits will be the lip for the thing to sit in, so I'll be partially writing that out. Again, like the original, I'm going to set the depth so that the bottom of the keycaps are about flush with the top surface. And for this, I'm just going to use my trim router that's actually supposed to be mounted on my CNC. And all that this is using is the included straight bit. A proper jig would be the way to go, but I couldn't be bothered to do that, so I'm just going to do a partial jig by clamping a few pieces of wood to guard the router. I measured the gap to need to be 42mm away from the lines, so to start the routing I drilled a hole first to make it easier, and then started cutting from there. It's not a wide bit, so I'm running it at about a medium speed so it won't catch on the wood. I did have a problem with the bit not being completely secured, so it did go too deep near the edges, but that won't be a problem, especially since it won't ever be seen. And with the one side done, it's quite messy, but it's exactly what I needed. The problem with doing it this way is that I have to keep turning it around, and it increasingly becomes more difficult to route, as there's no stable surface. But in the end, it turned out quite fine. The middle bit will be cut out anyway, so it doesn't really matter how it looks. To cut the inner hole, I couldn't be bothered to set up the router again, so I'm just going to be using my jigsaw. It won't give good results instantly, but it's quite easy to fix up. But I quickly learnt that this wasn't the case. I tried to hand sand to the lines, but it was way too difficult and time consuming. So it was back to the router to take a bit off, and then back to the sanding with a foam block. But then the dimensions weren't right, and... I had to take just a bit more off, and then I just did this by freehand, which ended up being really, really messy. Before I completely finalise the wooden shape with the sanding, I gotta create the bottom piece that will close off the numpad at the bottom. I'm gonna be using some scrap 3mm white opaque acrylic, and cut it down to the approximate size with my bandsaw. The blade that I have on the bandsaw is for cutting thin stuff like acrylic, so that's why it's not so great and fast with the wood. With the acrylic cut, I can sand the whole thing together to get the final shape. Also, for the USB cable, I'm just going to make a really small hole at the bottom edge of the wooden shell, 
with um, these files. As you can see, this thing is absolutely dodgy and ugly on the inside. The top and bottom bits of the frame are way too thin and would more than likely break if I dropped it in the right way. I gotta be really careful with the placement since my frame is already so thin and it could easily break. Before I solder on the cable, I'm gonna oil it first. All I have is linseed oil with me, so I'm just gonna use that. I'm not using any stain or varnish or something like that since it won't give me that natural look that I want. There's also about a 2mm gap between the PCB and the bottom piece of acrylic. So I'm just gonna stick another piece of acrylic which in this case is clear acrylic. It also kind of acts like a lip and groove connection so it keeps in place more securely. And here it is all cleaned up and done in its patchy goodness and I'm really pleased on how it looks considering it is made by me, uh, an absolute novice. And I always love how wood looks when all smoothed up and how it feels. This Tasmanian oak has quite a pale colour which is kind of strawish, although the linseed oil did give it way more colour. But I feel like it matches the white acrylic line at the bottom really nicely and it gives that bit of edge to the design. I went with a more roundish design mainly because of the mistakes I made like sanding too far accidentally but it ended up quite fine being a more retro type feel like the old rounded radios back in the day. So about the key switches, the different forces and feedback don't impact on speed really for me especially since I only use tip fingers at max. And I gotta say Gatorons are wonderful wonderful switches and in a few aspects are better than Cherry MX. So it's no surprise why they're so often recommended, especially for linear switches since they're so smooth and they're actually really cheap. This project as a whole was a really good learning experience for me. First of all, planning and preparation really does go a long way. Throughout the project I was taking shortcuts which ultimately made it worse and more time consuming in the end. If I had just made proper complete jigs and plans, everything would have taken longer to set up. but everything would have been much much quicker and cleaner through the whole process. An avid woodworker would for sure get this done in no time and if I did this again by hand it would be multiple times better. I also think some LEDs at the bottom would give it a really nice underglow which is quite a popular trend now in the enthusiast community and as for the feet I might make them later but for now this is it but anyways I did learn a lot and Next time I do this, I'll definitely be doing this on my CNC and everything will be spot on and clean. And here's a sound test for all those people that keep asking. 